Using a foam roller for a paint job can be quite daunting for some, but with the correct techniques, it can make all the difference in the quality of the outcome. In this beautifully transformed kitchen, Nadine has used this versatile tool to apply a stencil design to wall tiles. Join us on Live in Colour as she shows us how she's also used it to change laminated kitchen cupboard doors. When working with a foam roller, it is important to apply the paint evenly. I'll show you step by step how this is done. The foam roller I'll be using is 110 millimeters. When painting larger areas, you can also use a larger foam roller. The widest you get is 160 millimeters. I'm going to work in the color Don's Wash and pour some out in a paint tray. I'm now going to put some paint on my foam roller. So the foam roller shouldn't be too dry. And I just make sure that it is spread out nicely and evenly on the foam roller. I'm going to start in the center of my surface. Seeing that there is a lot of paint on my foam roller, I do want to spread it evenly downwards and upwards. Working with a foam roller requires some practice and skill. A mohair roller is an easier alternative for this application. When using a foam roller, make sure that there is no draft in your room as it pops the bubbles and creates a rough texture on the painted surface. As you can see, air bubbles start appearing. This is quite a normal process. It's the air in the foam roller that's now being transmitted to your surface. Once the paint dries, the air bubbles will just disappear. So the moment you apply pressure to the side where there's no paint, you can see it blends in evenly, the two paint coats next to each other. This is just the first coat. So a second coat will be applied, and in some instances, even a third coat. Reason for a third coat is, as you can see, the paint application is much thinner than with a paintbrush because the foam roller sucks up so much paint. Always important to remember is to wait for a coat of paint to dry well. This now will be left to dry for more or less 30 minutes before I start with my second application. When painting a large surface, a foam roller gives an even, smooth finish, whereas a brush can leave faint bristle marks. The line that we see here is not so visible and once the paint has dried, this faint line that you can see that appears here will also disappear. Once our second coat is dry, we will start with our glaze application and just finish it off with an embellishment. Choco paint has a beautiful accessory range, embellishments being one of them. On the kitchen that we've done, we've used embellishments just to create a final touch to the surface. The embellishment that I'm going to show how to use is one of our authentic chalkle embellishments. We always advise when painting embellishments to paint it in the same background colour as you've used. We have used Dawn's wash on the kitchen cupboard door and that's the same colour that I'll be using on my embellishment. So the first step will be to paint our embellishment. Once this is done, I'll leave it to dry before I start adding the final finishes. On previous inserts, we did mention that we recommend to glaze areas, kitchens, bathrooms and outside to make the surface water resistant and UV resistant. We are going to do that again, especially on kitchen cupboard doors, so that it's easy to clean, it creates a subtle satin finish, and you know it is water and stain resistant. So what I usually do is I pour out 100 ml of glaze and add 30 milliliters of water. I use a damp cloth, remove the excess, make sure it's evenly distributed in my cloth, and now I simply wipe it onto my surface. 
Now the fun part starts. I'm going to secure my embellishment using some super glue. Just important to remember when using super glue is that you measure, make sure it's in the correct position because once it's there, you will not get it off. I'll be using an artist brush and the colour Sheriff Stone to now start creating some shadows around my embellishment. I'm going to work small areas at a time so that I have time to blend before the paint starts drying. So I paint even right next to the embellishment. My brush is not too wet. And with a damp cloth, I wipe away lightly. So in the grooves, I apply more paint, so the paint can actually sit and stay behind as I wipe with my damp cloth. On the sides, where the cupboard and the embellishment meet, I use very little paint and a very dry brush so it immediately gives that faded effect. An advisable tip when working with a foam roller is not to overwork the foam roller. Gently roll, make sure you cover all the areas and rather leave it to dry. Once it has dried and you might see some unevenness, Take a 200 grit sandpaper and just even out all the unevenness before you start applying your next coat. But it's easy as you've seen today. I hope that I've inspired you today to create something beautiful in your own space. Visit thehomechannel.co.za for a full list of choco paint workshops and more. For stockist opportunities, email nadine at chocopaint.co.za. Happy painting!